Hello and welcome to Show Me Vax, Missouri's immunization information system. Today we're going to talk about how this system can be beneficial to the provider. The objectives of our slides today in our brief presentation is to for the provider or yourself participant to be able to understand what is Show Me Vax? What levels of access does somebody have to it? How do you gain access? And state at least one benefit to trying to use the program. So why do we, why is an immunization information system needed or an IIS? Well, as you can see on this slide, CDC did a, a lot of research and they did note that by two years of age, most children have seen multiple providers. This can lead to children getting um, shots, their shot records being difficult. They're unable to locate their shot records. They're getting multiple immunizations, uh, sometimes several of the same type. We've had kids that's gotten nine or 10 DTAPs and there's really no need. So by using this one system, if all providers input the information into the system, it gives a better tracking and accountability of those consolidate the records for the child. It also, if all providers submit information, immunization information of their patients into ShowMeVax, it lets the state better look at coverage rates and zip codes and areas so that we can target our immunization efforts to those that areas that have the lowest coverage or maybe do specific outreach to target specific zip codes or a specific population. And finally, it use, it's a proven method of increasing a clinic's vaccination record rates for vaccines. And you can do this because the system will forecast when the next dose is due. So the provider doesn't have to rely on their memory. It can guide a clinical decision-making. Um, and it also helps determine the vaccination status of the patient. If a person comes in without a record, you can look them up in the system if all of their information has been provided and find out what they've had, when they had it, and what they're due now. So, Next slide would be, what is ShowMeVax? ShowMeVax is a web-based system that can be used by providers to input data, Im immun providers, schools, or daycares. You can track a person's vaccination record as long as the person's been inputted into the system. You might say, when does, the, when does a person come into the system? Well, ironically, if you're born in Missouri, you're into the system. When you, as soon as you get your birth dose of Hep B, that is usually put into the system. So the person does actually have a record as soon as they're born. So your next question on the next slide is, who can you show me Vax? Well, healthcare providers in Missouri can you show me Vax? You can have um, pharmacists are actually required to, to submit their data of all immunizations they administer into the system. Um, COVID providers that are enrolled with the state are required to submit that COVID vaccine that they administered to the system. Um, we, as of January 1st, we are requiring all of our vaccines for children's provider to use, to input uh, the vaccines they administer into the system. The only one that's not required are private providers. So if you do not, if you're not enrolled in COVID or you're not a VFC provider, at this time it is not uh, mandatory to use. However, it is very beneficial. And we'll talk, talk about that in the later slides. Um, the other I, who else can have access to Show Me Vax is childcare facilities. And they have a special access called Read Only where they can look up a child to see if uh, the child in their facility is properly immunized. Also schools have access, especially school nurses, because when they're looking for shot records on kids, sometimes schools have the best record and sometimes they don't. So they can now uh, pull up their patient, their, their uh, students' records. Now that childcare facilities and schools at this time cannot input records into the system, only a medical provider.
So what can Show Me Vax do for you, the provider? Well, it can give you quick access to Show Me Vax, to, to vaccination records. It's a click of the button. You can order Vax, if you're a Vaccines for Children's provider, you can actually use the system to order all your vaccines online. Um, and generally, if you order online, you get them a lot faster than if you do the paper orders. Um, it can provide immunization coverage reports. So say you want to know as a provider what your vaccination rate is for your 24-month-olds. There's a simple report that you can that you can run to see where that's at and how well are you doing. Um, you can also provide um, a reminder recall. Reminder recall is a strategy that has been proven to increase a provider's immunization rates, or clinic's immunization rates, rather. Um, a reminder sends out before the vaccination is due, and a recall is sent out when the patient is, like, behind, and you're recalling them to come back into the system, or come back to your clinic to get the, their needed vaccines. The great thing about Show Me Vax is it does this, it can do this for you. It can actually run your report overnight, and we will have a demonstration of this ability in a little while. Um, it can also provide an official immunization certificate. So the vaccine certificate that you'll see in a few slides, it'll show a state stamp um, so that you can give your, your patients an official record. And ironically enough, most of your patients think the state has their your shot record. Unless a provider puts it into the state, we don't have it. So um, it does provide that record for those immunization records. It forecasts upcoming immunizations. So that might be, say you have a 12-month-old um, a and you want to know when the next shots are due. It will forecast that, that for you. Or say a new vaccine comes out and you're not really sure on the spacing. Um, actually, our IIS gets the updates right from CDC, so it, it will get updated pretty fast and get that spacing for you. Say you have no idea, you got a new patient and you have no idea where they got their last shots. If that provider had put their information into Show Me Vax, you could pull up that record if you had access and to see. And as an FYI, Medicaid does put the vaccines in for their, their patients. So we do have a lot of vaccines in his system. Next slide. So what types of access? Because we did talk about that. There are several types of access for people depending on what level of, of access is needed. As I've said, school and daycares, you really only have read only. So they can pull up a record, but they can't make any adjustments to that record. But clinics have that ability. They can have read only where they can just pull up the record. They can have an HL7, which is an electronic messaging between their EMR system and the Show Me Vax system to access and write into records, submit vaccines given, histories and all that into the system. And they could also, if they have a bi-directional entry uh, system, can receive messages from, from the system. We also have an inventory user. So say you are a vaccines for child children uh, provider and you want to use the vaccine inventory mod module. So you can put your inventory into it and then every time you enter that this person got a shot, it deducts for you. It makes re reconciliation toward the end of the month very, very convenient. And then we have data entry, which is everybody sitting down and putting actually who got what shots into their system. And those are all clinic level reporting systems. Next slide. So how do you gain access? That's an excellent question. Well, a memorandum of agreement has to be signed. And we do have that, as you can see on the slide. It looks like this. It's a very formal letter. Um, it's signed by the CEO or the superintendent or the owner of the clinic or a facility. If you already if you already are a VFC provider and you, you're just getting access, you'll need to include your VFC PIN number, provider informa information number, or identification number. If you're a COVID provider, you'll need to provide that too. Um, you indicate then also on this memorandum agreement how you will be reporting, where you'll be doing are you going to do electronic health messaging? Or are you going to do direct data entry? Or are you going to do both? Some do both. 
and then you simply contact Show Me Vax Help Desk, as you can see on the um, on the website below on the slide. Next slide. Once you have your MOA on record and we've said, yes, great, they're approved, then you go ahead and you can access Show Me Vax. To access Show Me Vax, you'll need to use Google Chrome or um, Firefox or some kind of. Google Chrome does work best though. It will not work on Internet Explorer. Then you click on Request User Access. As you can see, this screen pops up. And then you're going to look to see what type of account you need. If you're the primary vaccine coordinator, backup vaccine coordinator, or you're just clinic staff or maybe um, a clerk that are entering vaccine records. Different ones come with different levels of um, access. And uh, you can be the medical director requesting, which we have a lot of medical directors that request access. It is important that every staff member in your facility that is using Show Me Vax, they must have their own login. The state very frowns on, on sharing logins. No sharing. Next slide. Access is granted on different levels. So it really depends on what you're going to be doing in the system and where your position is in the clinic. Coordinators have to do a lot. They have to do patient management. They have to do inventory sometimes, clinic tools, because um, they'll have to enroll their clinics um, or re-enroll if you're a VFC provider, re-enrollment is online. If you're a COVID provider, your enrollment is online. So your clinic coordinators usually have a lot of access and they have access to reports. Um, clinic staff, so say you're just a nurse or you're um, a data entry person, you can have patient management and reports. Patient management will help you um, pull up a patient, um, look at their record, um, see what they have, so a lot of stuff. Um, the medical director can have the patient management, clinic tools, and reporting system and reports. Next slide. So what do you do first? Well, you once you get the access to bring up your access page, you do an account registration. In every individual, as we said, that needs access has to get their own account. So by filling this form out, it will give you that. Make sure you request the access you need because otherwise then you have to keep going back in and redoing it or re, um, say, hey, I'm sorry, I need this too. So it's just easier to do it all in one time. And then you're going to fill out this form, indicate the type of access you need. If you need all of the access levels, check them all. If you only need patient management, check patient management. And then make sure after you complete the form that you submit it. If you don't submit it, we can't get to it. So once you submit your form and you've got your username and your password, then you're going to go into login. So you're going to Google Show Me Vax or you go through the Bureau of Immunizations website and you get to the page. It should look like this. You should see the Show Me Vax logo. This is the place where you log in. So you'll put your username and your password. Make sure everybody that gets a brand new username and password, you have to change that password immediately on your first login and it will it will trigger that for you. Some people say, well, I, if you're like me and I have a ton of passwords, I always forget my password. In fact, I can't tell you how many times Show Me Vax has gone ahead and put my password, changed the password for me. Well, now the system will do it for you. You'll simply click on forgot password and then it will prompt you to, to get a new password. So you do not have to call the help desk any longer to change your own password. Unless you're like me and you log, you've locked yourself out too many times. So once you put your password in, your user ID, you'll come up to this page. 
it's the home page. The home page is really important for providers. It will have several different things on it. It will have a banner, and the banner is for news that's important for you to know. Um, examples would be if we have new vaccine coming, if there has been a recall of vaccine, um, if there has been a change to something, this is on this page. Um, we, re we did this with when we had um, the J&J &J stop um, halt. We posted it on here for our provider. So it was the first thing they saw. Sometimes ACIP meets, which is the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, and we'll post whatever updates they have on this page. If you have noticed like, oh, wait, show me um, vaccines for children's enrollments coming up, it'll be on this page. Um, lots of things go on this page. So make sure that um, it's a good thing to have. So pay attention. There's also a navigation side, a navigation panel. It's usually in blue and it's customized to each user. The one you're looking at is mine, so I have a lot of access to different things because I'm, I'm with the program. However, your individual access will look a little different. You might not have everything in here. You'll usually have access to patient information, clinic information, managing inventory if you need it, and reports. Those are the key ones that you usually always have. Um, and you'll see little drop down screens on each one, like little arrows. If you click on that arrow, it opens up further. So it's a good thing to get to know your navigation page. Next slide. So we'll start with the basics, looking up a patient record. So you go into your navigation page, you select your clinic information, then make sure it's your clinic, not someone else's, and then you'll do a patient search. You're gonna select patient and then you're gonna do a patient search. You'll put, make sure you put the name and um, usually a birth date or uh, gender into the patient search bar and you hit search. The more information you put in, the easier it is to search, I will tell you that. However, um, say you don't know the spelling is incorrect and you just put a couple letters in, you can still search the patient record up that way. It's not an issue. Then you go ahead and you say you're going to search and I'm pulling for for the demo for these modules here for the pictures you'll see it's my record I don't care I'm fully immunized pretty much um so make sure when you're pulling up that record scroll down and make sure that you see the patient that you need if you don't see them then they're probably not in the system where you've spelled the name wrong next slide So, your patient search, if your patient is in the system, it should appear. Um, as you can see, there's my name. Um, I am in the system. Hover over the search results to make sure your patient is correct. Um, because you don't want to duplicate records, you don't want to hit the wrong record and enter information in. If the patient is correct, then you click on the drop down arrow at the top and say, select immunizations, and it'll bring up their immunization record. But you say, hey, they're not in the system, so what am I gonna do? Then you're gonna say, create a new patient. And by clicking on new patient, and then click on new patient, and you can start a new patient. So you can enter somebody that's not in the system or that has come in for the first time. Next slide. So what does an immunization record look like on Show Me Vax? Well, here you go. This is my immunization record. I'm old, so it doesn't matter. So the great thing is Im the vaccines come up in different ways on the Show Me Vax side. So say you're un the dose is invalid, it'll come up in red. And it will show all doses, even if they're invalid, or incorrect, if they were given and administered and entered into the system, they still will appear on that sh shot record. 
make sure that you note that if they have the disease. So like a lot of kids will say, or my age had chicken pox, so we're not getting the chicken pox shot. The disease should be in there and it will be indicated in red as well. And then it will also up indicate any upcoming, like flag any upcoming or past due vaccines. As you see on mine, I'm past due on one or two shots, um, thanks to COVID. Um, so it will trigger that too, as a reminder that, hey, this person is past due and needs it. Or as a provider, maybe you're like, they've had it, I just didn't put it into the system. This is an excellent time to put it into the system. Next slide. So the immunization record. So say you're going to input something into the system. You can do a history. We encourage any vaccines given to the patient be entered into the system, regardless if you the provider gave them or if some other provider gave them. The more historical and doses administered into the system, the more complete the record. So it's very important. So I pulled up the record and I think this is me. Sorry, my eyes are old. Um, Show me cast will forecast what the vaccines are needed. Now I always say, while it is, for, it is a computer, if you're in disagreement of the computer, that is fine. You can look it up in the pink book or the purple book, um, just to make sure if there's any questions. Then once you agree or you disagree, you get the vaccines that's, that's needed. And then you can enter any vaccines that were administered during that visit. And you can enter the ones that you have on file that are not in there. You can enter as historical. Next slide. So I talked about accountability. Not everybody has to do accountability. If you are a COVID provider, you're going to do accountability. If you are a VFC provider, you're going to do accountability. And what is accountability? Basically, accountability is matching up the doses that you administered with what's left in your inventory. So say you gave, you had 20 DTAPs and you gave 10 DTAPs. So whatever you count in your refrigerator should match whatever is in your inventory. So the two should match. Um, so the there are, like I said, certain providers, if you're enrolled as a COVID provider with the state or a VFC provider, you are required to do the accountability. And that just helps us keep track of the vaccines that you're administering or um, and less wastage of the product. So you perform this um, reconciliation about once a month and you enter all, the good part is, Show me vax now. You can enter all transfers, adjustments, shipments, and returns, and wastage. That can all be entered in the system, and then it electronically figures out different things. Um, we ask that all providers enter it, that are using the system or required to use enter those vaccines within 24 hours of administration. It just helps, especially when you're doing accountability. You're not going back 30 days and have hundreds of charts to go through. Next slide. Some other benefits we talked about early in the, early on is what other benefits to a provider is there? Yes, VFC providers and COVID providers are required to do the to, to use the system. However, maybe you're not one of those, but you're like, why should I? Well, we know it's consolidating the records. People can get go, go to a local health department. They can go to your office, and you have the record then. You don't have to keep searching. Um, lots of providers close down or they retire. And if they didn't have the immunization record with them, it's lost. So it's really important that we put it into one place. Other times, reports. Reports are great. The reports on the that the system can run for a provider are numerous. And we're, we have, we're getting more and more each time, each day, basically as, as the system grows. So you can run, to, to know what reports you can run, you would go to the navigation bar, 
click on reports and then this white bar will tell you the listing of all the reports that you can run. These are canned reports so they're already in there and this is just a portion of them. Um, you can do reminder recall. Reminder recall does take a while to run. So if you're doing a huge reminder recall on all your patients, you can actually set this to run overnight while you're not in the office and then come in the next morning and it's run. You can do doses administered. Say you want to know if you're a COVID provider, you want to know exactly how many doses you administered for the month. You can say, hey, I want to know how many, there's a report on that. You can say, I want to know how many doses I administered from, let's see, we'll go February 9th through June 9th and it will run the report for you. Sometimes reports take more, a little more time depending on how much you're running. And then it, it can come up with a wastage report as well. Those are some of the few. You can run um, patient uh, roster reports. Sometimes our staff will come in to VFC offices and we'll do what we call IQIP visits, immunization quality improvement for providers. And we'll ask for some charts to review. And you're like, well, that person hasn't been here and that person hasn't been there and this person. So if you run a patient roster report out of Show Me Vax, it helps you and it helps us. And we can, they'll, so then you can say, well, these four people have never been here. That's a good report. Um, other reports that you can run in is your rates. Say you want to know what your child, what your uh, childhood rates for your 20, 24 month olds are. How many are up to date? How many aren't? It's important because you don't know where you, you need a starting point if you're going to look at quality improvement. You might think you're doing great, and then you run the report. You're like, "Ooh, we're not." So those are important weights. Um, and we are going to actually have one of our staff demo some of how to run these rates. We're going to have her demo how to run a recall, doses administered in a patient roster um, for you, so you can see how how the rate how it's demoed. Um, how easy it is, because it's really not hard. If I can figure it out, anyone can figure it out. And then you might say, well, I still need assistance. Who do I contact for assistance? Well, you can contact the SMV support staff, your IQIP consultant, or your VFC consultant. We are all more than happy to help you. Next slide. Now we will have a live demonstration by Debbie Bontoski, who is our Show Me Vax um, expert. And she's gonna show you how to uh, do a patient, uh, patient report, um, how to run that reminder recall, doses administered, some of those. And we'll also start, um, we'll add a um, resource for you, which is um, a listing of the resort reports that is offered and how to run them. Thank you for um, having this presentation on Show Me Vax. We're here for any questions. Please feel free to ask. My name is Lana Hudnick. And if you have any questions or concerns, let us know. Um, if you want more information on Show Me Vax, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to our VFC SMV support staff, support at health.mo.gov. Thanks. Hi, my name is Debbie Bonchonsky. I'm with the Bureau of Immunizations, and I'm also um, with the Show Me Vax Immunization Registry on the Help Desk staff. What I'm going to demo you here today is the, our actual application. So right now we're looking at our login screen. When you receive your user information, when you request um, user access, you will log in using your username. When you enter your username, it will automatically always default to all caps and your password is case sensitive. Once you log in, you'll be brought to our home screen and you'll have make sure you wanna verify that your default uh, provider and clinic is correct. If not, please notify the help desk uh, staff so we can get that corrected for you. Also, you will see our news page. Anytime we have an announcement, um, we will post an announcement here for um, all our users to see. To navigate through the system, 
over here on the left hand side is our blue navigation panel and we've got several man, uh, menus so to search for a patient you would click on the little plus next to patients and then you would click on search um, once you search for that client then you could go to any one of these other actions on the left hand side um, for immunizations to be able to do their immunizations. Um, if you're a VFC or a COVID provider, you'll also be able to do your um, inventory, managing your inventory where you would do your order and orders um, under there as well, under vaccines. Over here would be your actual inventory on hand that you can see what you currently have on hand. Your reconciliation is your monthly reporting that you have to do for us. And then um, VFC providers can place their orders and also manage their um, returns for expired vaccines. Uh, clinic tools over here, you've got your storage units. Uh, your manage assets is where if you get a new unit or a new thermometer, you would add that. And also for your clinic information, if it needs to be updated, um, you can update any one of these um, functions right here, your address, contact information, delivery hours, or if you need to add or remove staff as well. The next thing I'm gonna go over is some reports. Um, if you click over here on reports, there's a large number of reports that um, providers can access and depending on your access level will depend on what reports that you can actually um, view. So in the first section, you've got patients. This is some, this section here, um, everybody can view. Um, forms and informational, if you need vaccine um, information statements, your VISs for the most current one, you click on the link, it will take you directly to the CDC website for the current listing of VISs. Uh, Missouri forms and documents. This is where we've got all our user guides and um, also our training videos. Our training videos uh, will be listed under the Show Me Vax. Uh, trying to find them right here. Show Me Vax training videos. Uh, you click on that, it will take you to our YouTube page, and we've got several little short videos on the different processes that can help guide you along the, the processes as well as these user manuals. Uh, patient management. Under patient management, the first report that I'm going to show you is going to be patient reminder recall. I know a lot of providers are interested in this report so they can um, get a list of patients that need to be um, recalled, whether it's for their first dose or their second dose um, of the different vaccines. So if you click on the reminder recall, and then first what you have to do, you have to create um, a recall report. And what will happen is it does process overnight. So once you run it like today, it won't be available to, to tomorrow. And I've already ran one, but I'm going to show you the different criteria that is available. So you would click on add reminder recall. Um, you would name it and then make sure it's your clinic. And um, for private providers, you can do the patient default clinic because these will be for patients that are actually assigned to your clinic. Um, if it's a pharmacy, then you would have to use the vaccination clinic because you do not take ownership of those patients that come in for when you do um, your immunizations. Run and schedule date, uh, you could just double click and put the current date so it will run overnight. Um, and then the date range that you want to be looking at. So um, if you're a huge provider, or we typically tell you to use a shorter date range, because uh, sometimes the reports can time out if there's too much data that it has to return. So like um, this is June, if you want to see who needs to come back in July, you can go ahead and put July 1 um, through July 31st. Um, and then also the age range, if you want to do months um, or if you want to do years. Then there's here, you could put whether you want the gener uh, generate reminder recall event. So that's what you want to click. And then here's your vaccine series. So you could do all of these. If you wanted to only see what the COVID was, you can click your COVID-19 and you could say, okay, we want to do dose number two. And then you would hit create. Then once it's created, what happens, like I said, it will run overnight. And then I'm gonna go back to this original screen. And then the next day when you come back to the reminder recall, this is what you will see right here. And you'll see where it's um, been processed. You can view the report. You can um, 
you can also review it over here. You can also do um, postcards. Um, if you want it in an extract, like kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, you can click on there. I'm going to show you a report that I pulled up um, just to show you what it looks like. Um, and I did take out all the identifying information just because due to HIPAA. So this is what the reminder recall would list for all those patients that would fit that criteria that you have entered. Um, like I said, this you can run it in a PDF or you can run it in an extract. It just depends on which one you prefer. Okay. So then the next report I'm going to show you is going to be doses administered. And doses administered is going to be down under the covered statistics. So not everybody will have access. Once again, depending on the access level you have will um, depend if you are able to access this. So I'm going to click on doses administered. Um, I've got my clinic. I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a two week period. I'm going to do all my COVIDs. bring it over here. If you wanted to do other vaccines, you could click your other vaccines as well. You can also run it by the report type, um, whether you want a patient count, where you want total, just a total number, or if you want to break it by down by vaccine, you could also do vaccination count the same way, whether it's just a total number of the vaccinations, or if you want to break it down by vaccine. For this demonstration, I'm going to do the vaccination count, and but I'm going to do it breakdown by vaccine and I'm gonna run it in a PDF, and then you're gonna click on a report. It will produce that report, and um, this is what that report's gonna look like. So it's gonna tell you, this is the age bracket from one to 18, the different COVID and how many doses were given for the different um, manufacturers that you carried, your stock that you had in your inventory, and then over 19 as well. And then the last report that I'm gonna show you is going to be under patient management. Again, it's gonna be the patient roster. Now remember as a pharmacy, because you do not take ownership of these patients, you will not be able to run this report. Um, so you would fill in the criteria here, the vaccination date range that you wanna use, um, age range. And then um, you wanna make sure you could just leave these in here, or if you wanted to only show active um, patients, then you could always just click on the active. You can run it in a PDF or Excel or an extract. Um, I ran it in Excel and I've blocked out uh, patient information, identifying information just so we could do the HIPAA. So it's gonna give you your provider name, your clinic name. It's gonna give the patient name, last and first name with their date of birth. And then it's just going to tell you the last time that they received a vaccination and then how old they are. If the county is listed, also give you listed. And that is the report section of Show Me Vax. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. <music>